Hello boys and girls. Today we're going to be talking about subject and object pronouns, which is your new grammar topic and it's also your last grammar topic of the year. So congratulations for making it this far. Let's get into it. So what are subject and object pronouns? Well, pronouns can be categorized based on the role that they play in a sentence. So they can wear different hats based on what they're doing in the sentence basically. So subject pronouns act as a subject in a phrase or in a sentence. Remember, a subject of a sentence or a phrase is the one that's doing the action, or it's the person, place, or thing that the sentence is about. But you can also have object pronouns. Object pronouns act as an object in a phrase, meaning they're not the ones doing the action. Usually they have an action that is done to them, or they could be the object of a preposition. So we'll look a little bit closer at that. So subject pronouns. Let's talk about subject pronouns. A subject pronoun is used in the subject of a sentence. The subject is the doer of the action or who or what the sentence is about. I, you, he, she, and it are all subject pronouns. So you'll see those being the doer of the action or they'll be the focus of who or what the sentence is about. Subject pronouns are usually at the beginning of a sentence or of a phrase. You have to be careful though, boys and girls, because sometimes it'll be at the beginning of a phrase that is in the second half of a compound or a complex sentence. So it's not always going to be in the beginning of a sentence, but it will usually be at the beginning of a phrase. And that means it will be coming before the action verb of the sentence or of the phrase. So an example of some subject pronouns in sentences would be, we searched for her lost shoe. It was in her closet. We is obviously a pronoun that would replace more than one person. So we could be me and you. It could be uh, Ms. Bruin and Ms. Esposito. We is replacing two or possibly more than two people in this sentence. So we is a subject pronoun because we are the ones that are doing the action in the sentence. Therefore, we is the subject of your sentence. In the second example, it was in her closet. It is also a subject pronoun because we're referring back to it. We're talking about the shoe. The shoe is the subject of the sentence because that's what we're talking about in this sentence. It is the main topic of the sentence. So it replaces shoe, therefore it is a subject pronoun in this sentence. Let's look at some object pronouns. An object pronoun is used in the predicate of a sentence after an action verb or with a preposition, such as for, at, about, with, or to. You'll remember those words from when we learned about prepositions a long, long time ago. I think in the second marking period we learned about prepositions. But you'll notice that an object pronoun will usually come either directly after a verb or directly after a preposition. So you have to keep your eyes peeled for those. Some examples of object pronouns are you, him, her, it, us, me, and then those are all object pronouns that you'll see after a verb or after a preposition. Object pronouns are usually in the middle or at the end of a sentence, but not always. The big clue here is you're going to see them come after a verb or after a preposition. So an example or two example sentences where you see object pronouns would be, we recognized them at the mall. Them is one of our object pronouns and it happens to come right after the verb of the sentence here recognized so because it comes after the verb and it's in our object form here of the pronoun that's how you can tell this is an object pronoun it also is located in the middle of the sentence that's just yet another clue that you have yourself an object pronoun the subject or the doer of the sentence would have been this pronoun over here we so that would be a subject pronoun rather than an object pronoun in your second sentence they walked over to us us is the object pronoun here because it comes after the preposition to Two is one of our prepositions noted up here in the examples. If you need a refresher on your example for prepositions, you can always look back at your notes or do a simple Google search to refresh your memory on what some examples of prepositions are. Let's look 
at some examples together. We're going to underline the subject pronoun in the sentence and put a box around the object pronoun. So each sentence will have at least one of each of these kinds of pronouns. Let's look at the first example. He ate all of the cookies and left none for us. Hmm. The first step you're going to want to take is spot the pronouns in the sentence, regardless of whether or not you know their subject or object pronouns. If you can spot all the pronouns, that's the first step. So do you notice two pronouns in this sentence? Have you found them yet? Hmm. All right, now that you've found the pronouns, let's see, who is the doer of this sentence, of this action in this sentence? Who is the one that's actually doing all of this, the eating of the cookies? That's right. He. He is our subject pronoun because he is the one doing the action of the sentence. What about our object pronoun? Do you see a pronoun that comes after the verb or perhaps after a preposition? That's right, us. Us comes after the preposition for, so that makes it our object pronoun. Let's try another one. Danny and I have to call her later to talk. Hmm, first step is to spot your pronouns. Do you see at least two pronouns in this sentence? Hmm. All right, now that you've spotted your pronouns, which one looks like it's doing the action in this sentence? If you said I, you're correct. Even though it's a compound subject, Danny and I, I is the only pronoun in that subject. Therefore, it's a doer of the action. Therefore, you need a subject pronoun to replace it. So no matter who I refers to, it's a subject pronoun that you've replaced it with. Do you see another pronoun in this sentence? Hmm, perhaps one that comes after a verb or after a preposition? That's right, her. Notice how her comes directly after the verb call. Call is our verb here. Her is the object of that verb. So we've put it in the object form. Notice that if you were to go back and look at our other object pronouns, her is definitely in that list. Let's try another one. She likes pickles, but I don't like them. First, spot your pronouns. Hmm. All right, maybe you're looking and you're thinking, oh, I see some, I see a bunch of pronouns in here. That's right, we actually have an extra one thrown in. So now we have to decide what kinds of pronouns are these? Look at that first half of the sentence. This is actually a compound sentence, so there's a first part and a second part. In that first part, you have a subject and a predicate. So we are looking for a pronoun here. Do you see it? She, that's right. She is a subject pronoun because she is the one doing the action. Who's liking pickles? She is liking pickles. Therefore, she is the subject of that phrase. However, we have a completely separate second phrase at the end, but I don't like them. Therefore, we have a second subject and a second predicate, which means, that's right, we're going to have a second subject pronoun here. I is doing a completely separate action because we have two parts to this sentence. We have phrase number one, she likes pickles, and we have phrase number two, but I don't like them. In that second phrase, I don't like them, we have another doer of the action or another subject. That is I. However, we also have an object pronoun here. Did you spot it? That's right, them. Them comes after the verb like. So because it comes after a verb or in other cases after a preposition, it's got to be an object pronoun. Awesome. Let's try another one. We haven't seen you in a while. Okay, step one, spot your pronouns. Do you see them? All right, which one is doing the action in the sentence? If you said we, you're absolutely correct, boys and girls. We haven't seen you in a while. Who is not seeing someone in a while? We. So we is the doer of the action in that sentence. Gotta be a subject pronoun. Notice how a lot of these subject pronouns are coming at the beginning of the sentence or at the beginning of a phrase. But we've also got an object pronoun someone in here, somewhere in here. Do you see it? That's right, you. You comes after the verb seen. So it has to be an object pronoun. Let's try one last example. In the morning, I make toast and eat it. 
Okay, so we have an introductory phrase in the morning. Don't let that throw you off. We're still looking for our pronouns here. So do you spot a couple of pronouns? Okay, if you've spotted your pronouns, look for the one that's doing the action in the sentence. Which one is doing the action in the sentence? If you said I, you're correct. I am the one making toast. Therefore, I is a subject pronoun. But do you see perhaps another pronoun that follows either a verb or a preposition? That's right, it. It comes after the verb eat. Therefore, it is an object pronoun. Awesome job, boys and girls. So what are some quick reminders you need to keep in mind before you do some independent practice this week? Well, step one, remember, you got to identify all your pronouns in your sentence first. Then step two, identify their roles. Is it an object pronoun? Is it a subject pronoun? You have to remember which one is which. So to remind you, subject pronouns are the doers of the action or the subject of a sentence. They're going to be I, you, he, she, or it. The object pronouns come after an action verb or a preposition, and they're going to be ones like you, him, her, it, us, me, and them. So notice that you can be either a subject or an object pronoun. It will change based on its role in the sentence, so that's the one you've got to be really careful with, boys and girls, because yes, it will be one or the other. It's never going to be both at the same time, but you have to read the sentence and pay attention. Who is you referring to? Is you the one that's doing the action, or is you the one that's having an action done to them, or are they the object of a preposition? You have to pay close attention, boys and girls, to be able to spot the difference there. So now, what do you do? Well, you're going to rewatch this video as many times as you need to for stuff to sink in. You're going to log on to Study Island and complete the subject and object pronouns practice assignment under your ELA class. And then you're going to keep practicing these questions in multiple sessions to prepare for your last grammar test of the year. Woohoo! Which one, which will open on Thursday and be due on Friday, June 12th. So on June 12th, after you turn in your test, give yourself a big pat on the back because you are done with grammar for the year. All right, boys and girls, let me know if you have any questions. Best of luck, and I will see you soon.